Hello and welcome to Data Conversations Over Coffee with myself, Craig Stewart. This is the second episode um, that I'm doing in a series in this wonderful studio here in London, the London Studio. Um, it's also something that we're working towards, a very exciting project that we'll be launching globally in July, which really features premium in-person content. Joining me today is a very good friend of mine. We've been working together for a long time. We've been to Dubai together. We play golf together. We need to, need to do more of uh, Mark Nasila, Chief Analytics Officer at FMB. Mark, how are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm honored to be here and um, uh, look forward to this conversation with you. Yeah, likewise. Me too. So, Mark, what we're going to be discussing today is a little bit of a departure from uh, sort of the normal corporate data analytics conversation that we've, we have. And we had uh, what is effectively a conversation, um, Datacon Pakistan, this week. Mm -hmm. um, so we're actually doing a lot of, lot of work together. We're going to be talking about uh, the use of data science for social good. Maybe before we start um, into, into depth there, what is data science for social good? Thank you so much, Craig. Um, from what we've learned in the past year through this pandemic, is that the wellness of society uh, affects the wellness of organizations, the, the wellness of different sectors. If you recall, uh, in 2015 or 14, uh, Obama became the first American sitting president to appoint a chief data scientist uh, in, 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 in his government, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. DJ Patil. And he stated clearly, uh, all data scientists have a responsibility to make sure that uh, some of their capabilities or skills are used in a similar way, uh, the way it's done in business, to solve for some of the societal challenges, uh, which includes uh, helping uh, social uh, organizations or government understand um, social problems. Uh, the same way um, these uh, data science capabilities are used to uh, enable being proactive, some of these capabilities could be used to solve uh, some of the challenges. And in South Africa, for example, we've got uh, an issue of energy, we've got uh, poverty, we've got unemployment. Uh, the health sector requires some of these data science capabilities to be efficient. And um, basically, it's around leveraging data science skills and capabilities to empower um, uh, society. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but you, you mentioned the the pandemic, you know, in the last year, it's almost a year, you know, to the day that South Africa got uh, put into to lockdown. So we've gone through the full 12 months. But data science was social good. It was something that people were talking about even before the pandemic. Why is it becoming so important now, other than just sort of the wellness side of things? Is it a corporate social re responsibility um, initiative? Or is it just something that as humans we need to be more cognizant of? So some of these social challenges mm. have economies within them. Um, an example w will be if you look at uh, a smart Dubai program, mm. which is being driven by uh, Yunis Al Nasser. Um, w w I mean, I had an opportunity of presenting um, uh, mm. to him and, and, and people in Dubai. They've made sure that they even use legislation to uh, make sure organizations are not just solving mm. For, for, for their corporate uh, strategies, but to also allow them to um, solve for, for social problems. They've, uh, through the Smart Dubai program, they've made sure that uh, they make available hundreds of thousands of data sets which uh, businesses, uh, you know, social organizations can leverage to make sure that they drive economies. Mm -hmm. Um, in America in 2015, they already had a, over 135,000 um, open data sources made mm. available to society. And it's not just about philanthropism. Um, organizations um, can create economies, create jobs by solving these problems. But also, uh, back to the wellness issue, um, when organizations have challenges, when society has challenges, these challenges cascade mm. into different strategies. The pandemic was a real example. Uh, if you look at the uh, finance industry, uh, a lot of customers lost their jobs. Mm. A lot of customers um, were not able to fulfill their financial obligations, which is a risk that translated into different strategies. Um, the same way, it's the, you know, these challenges result into other risks. For yeah. example, you've got different forms of crime that crop up. Um, and, and therefore, it's, it requires a different way of thinking to make sure that there's a holistic mm. approach between uh, you know, just driving uh, what organizations want to do, but mm. also 
empowering society or even the public sector. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So your examples really are around uh, government, you know, large governments. Um, obviously, Dubai is a fantastic example of their yes. um, sort of real digital government initiative that they've got and then helping mm. their society be more happy, which is their ultimate end goal. And I think government's got a you know, inherent responsibility to use data or their activities for social good. Um, but a large part of the economy is made up by private sector. What's holding private sector um, back from really using data science for social good? So the first thing is traditionally, um, you know, we, we've had these three sectors operate very independently. Uh, we've got, you know, the, the corporate sector, which mm -hmm. basically um, uses innovation and data because it designs products and services mm -hmm. uh, to customers. Then obviously we've got the social sector, which looks at driving social initiatives, mm -hmm. protecting the environment and helping, um, uh, you know, put together policies that protect the value of life. And then yeah. we've got the public sector, which basically runs public uh, policies and make sure there's a fair play. Mm -hmm. Now, for this social good to be successful, these sectors have to work together. Mm -hmm. It's a different culture change. and. Um, data by itself or data strategies can be used as a gateway, sharing insights, sharing information, understanding um, uh, the integration of uh, different strategies from the corporate sector mm. to empower government because uh, if society is doing well, then the, yeah. you know, the corporate sector also does well. And I think uh, one of uh, the areas I've published so much is about the emerging fourth sector. Mm which is basically a, a cross-sectional sector that leverages competencies from all these sectors to make sure that while you're driving um, a stakeholder strategy, you're also solving for society and there's almost um, a, you know, a, a round effect mm. of value which uh, allows society to do well, uh, or corporate organizations mm. do well, societal organizations do well, and you know, we, mm. we end up having a better society. Yeah. Yes. I mean, these are all noble um, concepts, endeavors, etc. But you know, companies are driven by shareholder value, bottom lines, etc. What needs to change in the psychology and ethos of an organization to actually use data science for social good? That's doesn't always benefit the bottom line, or does it kind of always circle back to that? So you kind of, you know, as you say, you're kind of solving for both, both problems there. Yes, so the first thing is we need to take away the idea that when you're solving for society, you're just a philanthropist. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, there are various examples that have demonstrated that there's actually economic opportunities. Mm. For example, Elon Musk's uh, value proposition is actually a better environment and uh, I don't know if you remember, he launched his truck a couple of mm. years ago and during the demo, uh, when they threw a stone to, the to, to one of the windows, it yeah. actually broke. Yeah. And people, you would think that when something goes wrong in a demo, then you would actually lose the value for mm. your product. But reality is that he has a brand around society. Mm. Uh, he, you know, the whole uh, truck the Tesla truck has financed itself because he got in more orders at the launch than yeah. even you know what he had planned for. Um, and Tesla, the value of Tesla speaks for itself. Yeah. Uh, you go to, for example, Smart Dubai. We spoke about them. You know, you can you can see how much uh, uh, development they've done over a short period of time. It's a beautiful country, technologically mm. driven, and um, it shows that. When you solve for society, it's not just about, you know, helping. Uh, at the World Economic Forum two years ago, it was, you know, it was estimated that uh, if you are to just solve for five sustainable development goals, which are domains that represent societal challenges, there's over $12 trillion mm. worth of economic value you could create in the form yeah. of new businesses, not forgetting that every time you form a new business, you, you create new industries, um, which result to, to, to jobs, yeah. which again solves for things like employment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let, let's help maybe open the minds of the people watching, because a lot of your examples are very good examples. You know, Tesla, um, you know, Smart Dubai, again, we go back to. But within an organization, you know, obviously um, with a bank, where are the examples of social good? 
that data science can be used for, sort of more real-world things rather than sort of you know, solving for the environment with a battery pack and, and sending people to Mars yes. uh, and things like that. What are some of the real-world examples that people can start to look at within their business and say, we can help solve a societal issue, we can do data science, AI, et cetera, for social good, but at the same time, you know, we're driving our business forward, we're not getting distracted. You know, what are some of the, the more practical everyday examples that you can, can share with us? So wh- one of the uh, biggest challenges the world is facing is climate risk. Mm. And climate risk uh, basically has, results into environmental issues. And we've seen uh, the banking and the finance industry embark on a strategy to make sure that they integrate uh, climate risks and policies to make sure that we drive strategies mm that not only drive uh, profit, but also help our customers and other Mm. uh, stakeholders protect the environment. So if you have a flood or you have a thunderstorm, um, uh, which results from, uh, you know, uh, different reasons, Mm. it affects the customer. You know, they have to, you know, spend a lot of money uh, doing repairs, Mm. but also it cascades into, you know, uh, financial organizations because you lose value of the collateral, the property. Then, for example, at FNB, we're driving a strategy of helping our customers manage their money much better. Because if customers manage their money, it contributes to their financial wellness. They are yeah. able to uh, you know, meet their financial obligations, to, you know, look at their basic needs, support their children with education, invest, into, uh, invest for the future. Um, and and, mm. and it's, 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 it's a big challenge for a lot of uh, uh, customers who earn. Uh, to be able to you know mm. manage their money better so that they can uh, yeah. be able to afford and meet their needs mm. yeah, yeah I, mean, I think now we're starting to get into some of those examples where the customer will actually see a direct benefit yes. because everybody talks about the environment and you know we're not going to go out there and and pollute and and various things like that but a lot of people don't see a direct impact on yes. their daily lives so i think it's for me it's much more around from a citizen perspective from a customer spe- perspective yes. how are these initiatives going to help me and how does the the bank, the travel company, aviation, whatever it may be, a hotel group, a retailer, sort of communicate that to their, their customers without trying to effectively show off and say, hey, look, we're doing social good, but rather, yes. yeah, we're just being a good, credible organization. Yes, and, and I think one thing we've, uh, that has been proven is customers are loyal to organizations that are focusing on helping them beyond just um, you know, uh, providing products mm. and services. Mm. Um, it's not more about business anymore, it's about partnerships. Um, a lot of organizations now, are the, the problem they're solving society is becoming the new brand. Mm. You know, uh, because at the end of the day, um, there will be lots of other organizations that can offer the same products and services. And customers will be willing to provide data mm through uh, using your products because they know at the end of the day, you're not just going to use their data to design products and services, you're Mm. also going to use their data to become a partner that helps address some of the social challenges they Mm. have. Mm. And there's lots of them, education for example, is you know, Mm. we have challenges in education, energy as I mentioned, Mm. you know, we're having blackouts. And um, this is some of the problems, data, uh, can be used, you know, to 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 understand where yeah. there like to be failures, yeah. create efficiencies, uh, so that you know the you know, society mm. benefits from <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think some people would argue that using data to fix load shedding is not necessarily data for social good, but just data for doing your job properly. I think um, <laughs> uh, it's not. I think the education yes. piece is is really strong. strong. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. If you could move into a role where you purely use data science for social good, what are some of the key priorities that you would go after to, to fix? So the first one will be, you know, uh, the health area, you know, to create efficiencies, optimize um, uh, the, the resources we have, because once you fix, uh, you create a healthier society, it means you're spending less Mm. On, 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 you know, in the, in the health issue, you're empowering society. Um, and there's more productivity, mm. you know, so that you, you're almost saving an economy. Mm. Um, I would look at education. 
uh, we know very well uh, Dubai has done well because they have leveraged technology. Now they're using robots mm. to actually tell, teach calculus. Yeah. And it's the same challenge we have here, and it's a global issue. We're not going to have a lot of science and mm. mathematics teachers tomorrow. Energy is a very big problem. And the reason why energy is a problem, energy is a fuel of other economies and other industries. Uh, we're going through a pandemic which mm. requires us to have energy. Um, yeah. You know, the ventilators, doctors uh, mm. being able to work, perform operations. Um, and then we're looking at make sure that uh, we use data to make sure there's not misalignment of resources. Uh, there's not a single day now mm. uh, we, we, that goes by without talking about corruption. And, yeah. You know, there's a Zondo Commission going mm. there. Some of these challenges could be avoided proactively if we've got, you know, ledger systems mm. Uh, that allow uh, government to, uh, to, 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 you know, to, 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 to uh, manage its resources and spend well. Then, obviously, we've got an issue about, you know, um, gender-based violence and protecting women and children. Mm -hmm. uh, if women and children do not do well, uh, including minorities, mm -hmm. then so it, those challenges cascade into, mm -hmm. um, into society. But related to that is the whole world, you know, is, in, is investing in data and technology. A part of this being successful, we need to design systems that are fair, that are ethical, that do not result into inequality and even yeah. create much yeah. more social challenges. So um, it's important that we put mm. our minds together to design systems that create a yeah. fair society yeah. and do not open up a big gap in, yeah. in, in, yeah. in terms of... Um, you know, societal challenges. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. We've talked to sort of at the beginning of the, the episode around what's the incentive for, for business to, to do these things. And obviously it drives a you know, better customer experience, you know, yes. more customer interaction, revenue, etc. But it's, it's, it's not about sort of furthering inequality. Who's going to mm. be the judge of that? Who's going to look, out, look over the governance of these initiatives to say yes this is actually fair it's actually the social good is actually making things more level we're reaching the people that we need to reach rather than effectively enriching the organizations that are already rich through you know their advanced use of data analytics so there's different levels of assessment um, the first one is the person on the ground mm. society uh, society nowadays, everyone on the ground asks you, what are you bringing to the table mm. beyond your products? Yeah. So they will be the first judge. But um, in establishing a fourth sector model or establishing a cross collaboration between different sectors, it becomes a collaborative assessment where yeah, you, 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 there is a multi-dimension way which you measure value. Uh, obviously the mm. financial wellness organization yeah. of the organizations uh, certain uh, attributes around society that the public sector is responsible for, for example, employment, mm -hmm. access to basic resources, having a very smooth uh, or sleek health system where people can access medication. Uh, we still have a lot of, uh, pay, I think, mm -hmm. people in South Africa who manage or struggle to, to access chronic uh, yeah. medication on a monthly basis. And data and technology can help create an efficient way of this happening crime and security mm. you know those the, you know the, the, the statistics mm. once you, st you see statistics of crime reducing uh, then society will 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 understand that th th there is a progress yeah. around the using of open data sources and collaboration mm. between different sectors um, in creating a better society yeah yeah all right so let's move into the maybe the last part of the the episode and, and really for those people that are watching their organizations haven't necessarily gone down that path of thinking about how can we integrate our own data practices with you know data science for social good what what are the initial steps what are the foundations that organizations need to build to actually contribute to this you know big problem problem solving um, technology that we've got at our disposal these days. Yes. So data science for social good is a culture. Mm. In fact, um, it's a strategy on its own driven by a unique culture. And uh, a culture that will require collaboration, acquire a culture that will require strategic partnerships, mm. and a culture that will require starting to measure value in a totally different way, going from just looking at uh, monetary 
benefits to assess, you know, uh, starting to measure yourself mm. with the social differences you're making. And for any strategy, you obviously need your right people mm. to drive a specific culture. Yeah. The two are driven by different type of leadership, a leadership of collaboration. Um, this type of collaboration will be actually done using data. So yeah. the data strategies of social good or for the future have to be different. Mm. Uh, I talked about um, uh, social good being a brand. So in the future, in fact, it's already happening today, is that uh, people are loyal to organizations mm. that make a social difference. If you look at the Smart Dubai uh, uh, website, at the bottom is actually the sustainable development goals. Yeah. And that is the brand. That's yeah. the difference they're bringing. Yeah. And now that is how society will be measuring us going forward. Um, the other part is we need to realize is that if we don't solve for these problems, the future will not be reimagined or mm. modernized. Um, we're going to have a big gap uh, between uh, this, uh, you know, those that are doing well versus those that are, doing, that are not doing well. Mm. Uh, we're going to be consumers of products and services from countries that are doing well. Because um, they will develop products and services to solve for our problems. And we need to take a center stage of making sure that uh, we, 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 we solve for these problems, create solutions, uh, you know, uh, industries that will result to jobs and economies that will create a better society. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's so much incentive yeah. around it. Yeah. Yes. Where do you get your sort of energy and enthusiasm for this sort of thing from? I mean, everybody's got it in them, you know, the social yes. good is important, but you actually really research it and, and you come on and you want to talk about these things. Where does that stem from? So I, I love what I do. And when you love what you do, um, it's beyond your day-to-day -day job. Mm. You have to spend time creating a purpose in your life, uh, going beyond just yeah. pitching up eight to four. No, mm. you, you have to sleep. Yeah. Knowing that you fulfilled some objective, made a difference. Um, I do publish a lot and I do feel we all have a responsibility to contribute through thought leadership, yeah. ideas that can help make society. Uh, at the end of the day, as I say, society being well results to you know, all mm. of us being mm. happier. And, and, and we all in the world for a reason. Yeah. 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 All right, so I think that's a great way to sort of end off if um, you know, the people that are watching, find your purpose, find what you can do with your data analytic skills that will improve the wellness of society in general, not just from a health perspective. You know, wellness exactly. is just an, an, an all-encompassing yes. thing. Where can you actually make a difference? And I think where I can make a difference, Mark, and I'm sorry, this is a little bit flippant giving us, getting you out onto the golf course. Uh, you told me you haven't played since we played in, in November last yes. year. And I know that's not a big social problem, everyone. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Mark, great to chat to you. Thank look you forward so to, much. Uh, more engagements yeah. with you through great the course of the year and obviously getting out on the golf course. Thank well. you so much. I do look yeah. forward uh, as well. Yeah. And uh, keep up with the good work.